They really named a roller coaster after this guy. The Iceman cometh. Yeah. I'm gonna rank every coaster and give them a review. Every drop and every hill, every launch and every loop. Rate it one to ten and then we'll do it all again. Gonna rank and review every coaster. What's going on everybody? My name is Mario. This is a channel all about amusement park type stuff, but mostly coasters. And today in my never ending journey to rank and review every single coaster I have ever been on, we're going to be talking about Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, specifically the one at Six Flags over Texas, although the mirrored clone at Six Flags St. Louis probably delivers a near identical experience. But without any further ado, let's review. Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast is a launched shuttle coaster, and for those who don't know what a shuttle coaster is, it is a coaster that does not complete a full circuit, which basically means it is a long piece of track that doesn't connect at either end. So so you travel the layout both forwards and backwards. Mr. Freeze was manufactured by Premier Rides and originally opened one year later than expected in 1998. This attraction was loosely themed to the Batman and Robin movie released one year prior, whose main villain was the, let's just say, interesting Mr. Freeze. This theming is pretty limited and is contained to just the ride's queue building that is mostly just metal walls with graffiti, but the air conditioning is a nice escape from the Texas heat, and I suppose the AC is also a bit of theming as well. Cold. Oh, and not to mention the nightmarish ice cream clown that serves as the attraction's entrance, but I'd kind of just rather pretend that doesn't exist. Now, during the coaster's first 13 years of operation, it was simply called Mr. Freeze, and the ride started off by launching riders forward. Riders now begin their experience by launching backwards, as the new name of Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast would suggest. I have, however, only ridden the ride in its current backwards state, so that's how I'll be reviewing it. Now, to jump into the stats for Mr. Freeze, we have a height of 218 feet, a top speed of 70 miles per hour, one inversion in that you traverse forwards and backwards, and a track length of 1,300 feet. This contributes to a ride duration of 37 seconds from the initial launch to the final brakes, which is relatively short, but considering that the ride pretty much just consists of three elements, that is decently long for an intense shuttle coaster. And yes, this ride is intense. And to get into more of why that is, let's talk about the on-ride experience. Now you'll load into Mr. Freeze from one of the two loading stations into relatively cramped yet comfortable lap bar only ride vehicles. Once your train is ready to be dispatched, you'll experience one of this coaster's most unique features. Whichever station is ready first will move horizontally into the center of the building, which is where the ride's launch track is. This unique dual station switch track allows for higher capacity, and it's also just a cool way to start the ride. No pun intended. Once the track that you're currently on lines up with the track behind you, you'll be shot out of a long tunnel reaching your top speed of 70 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds. This is a relatively forceful launch, especially considering the fact that you are doing it backwards. Compared to other backwards launches that I've experienced, like Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain, this definitely blows that out of the water. It might be a little bit slower, but it has a much higher rate of acceleration, contributing to a much more forceful experience. Following your launch, you'll head into the coaster's inverted top hat, which is a really unique inversion. At the base of the element and as you begin your ascent, you'll experience a pretty heavy dose of positive g-forces before experiencing laterals as you twist roughly 90 degrees, and then you get another helping of positive g-forces through the inverting part of this element. Coming out of the element, you'll get more laterals as you twist down towards the ground, and even more positive g-forces at the pullout of the inverted top hat. The next element is a massive overbanked turn that continues this ride's theme of applying positive g-forces. The positives don't stop there as you make your way into the ride's vertical spike, and this has probably got to be my favorite 
favorite element. Once you reach that vertical angle of 90 degrees, you come out of your seat in a floating sensation that lasts well over five seconds, which is just incredible. Now, I've already said the word unique plenty of times, but this vertical spike probably has the most unique part of this launch coaster, which is a vertical launch as you are already traveling up that spike. Your body's already dangling towards the ground with just a lap bar holding you into your seat, and this launch midway up the spike propels you even further up, which gives your body an even more exaggerated feeling of being pulled towards the ground. And while I'm sure this part of the ride was fine going forwards, I feel like this probably has to be the biggest difference between the ride going forwards and backwards. I think it is so much cooler to be looking down at the ground like, oh crap, I'm over 200 feet in the air, versus just looking up at the sky and being like, oh, okay, that's the sky. Anyway, once your train stops making its way up the spike, your direction reverses and you free fall down the spike straight towards the ground. Now it's time to traverse the exact same elements, but this time going forwards. And while the forces and elements are very similar traveling in this direction, there are a couple of differences. Thanks to that extra little boost on the spike, the pullout of the spike leading into the overbank turn and the overbank turn itself are both considerably more forceful than the first time you traveled them, as you now have significantly more momentum. And as you can even tell from the POV, you are going considerably faster through that overbank than you were the first time you traversed it. By the time you make it back to that inverted top hat, however, you are traveling at a relatively comparable speed as the first time you hit it, so there isn't much of a difference as far as forces are concerned, but you are now just seeing where you are going as opposed to where you have been. You of course finish the ride by traveling back into that same tunnel you were launched out of and hitting the brakes, thus ending your ride on Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. And while there aren't a ton of elements, the fact that you do get to traverse them all twice makes this ride not really feel too short. Rides like Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm or Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point definitely make me feel a lot more gypped out of a ride experience than Mr. Freeze. So what I'm getting at is that this coaster really doesn't feel short. Additionally, even though there are only three elements on the ride, four if you include the launch, they're all fantastic. The launch is good, the top hat is forceful and disorienting, the overbank is quick and forceful as well, and that vertical spike is really unlike any other vertical drop out there. So, what would I rank this coaster? I'd give it a healthy eight and a half out of 10. What it does, it does super well. It's a comfortable ride, unless you can't handle intensity, with the only slight negative being the length. I really just wish there was more to this ride, but it'd be really hard to give it anything less than an eight and a half. As far as where it ranks compared to the 229 other coasters that I've been on so far, Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast sits at number 43. The majority of the rides above it are just significantly longer, but the excitement, great pacing, and intensity put it above a majority of the other coasters that I've been on. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. Go ahead and share your thoughts on Mr. Freeze with me in the comments down below. And make sure to tune in next time where I'll be talking about whatever this wheel lands on.